Good evening, everybody. Hope you're doing super well on this Thursday evening. I'm just gonna play this song until a few of you jump on. This is one of my like best songs of summer uh, that just went by. Not because I was getting uh, drunk during the day, it's just got a good beat. Just got a good beat. But happy Thursday to you all. And while I'm waiting for a few to jump on, what are you grateful for? What are you grateful for in your life? And one of the things I'm a big believer in is how you do anything is how you do everything. And gratitude for me is one of the, the greatest things that you can do to reinforce positive behavior and positive meaning and messaging and focusing in your life. Because where you put your mind, where you put your attention, where you put your focus matters. And there will never be any results in your life, life without effort. Like that's, I can guarantee you that. There will never be a result that you are after in your life without effort. Unless you just get super lucky and you're the 1% of the 1% of the 1% that you know, win the lotto or you, you know, inherit millions of dollars from your family or you're born into money. Most people have to work hard and hard work always works. So where you put your mind, where you put your focus, where you put your energy matters. And that's where effort is so important. Which leads me into, hello Ryan, hello uh, Brendan, good to see you, hello Lisa, hello Priya. If you're all there tonight with me, please let me know what you're grateful for. I would love to hear your gratitudes. And um, yeah, just nice to have you all checking in. <laughs> hey, blue eyes. Hello Andy Barrett, good to see you my friend. But one of my gratitudes is this, uh, the weather. It's been nice, it's been beautiful weather through summer and this kind of rainy, uh, getting up and putting the Ugg boots on, uh, the robe. I've got this cool robe, so it helps when it's freezing cold in winter and you actually can wear it. But um, today's all about, or tonight's all about authenticity uh, and why authenticity matters. Like, if you think about life, I mean this. Honest people don't work with dishonest people. Authentic people don't work with inauthentic people. And yeah, a lot of people go through their life and trying to try and be someone they're not or keep up with the Joneses. But you know, it's a, hard, it's a lot of hard work to try and be someone you're not or try and fit in into areas to be liked and approved of and feel like you're significant uh, and seek the validation that quite often we all need, I've been there before, to make us feel that we're worthy. Hello, Caroline. Hello, Kelly. Hello, uh, Mark. Good to see you all tonight. Hello, Jody. We all get caught up in that trap of seeking external validation. But I promise you this, when you start to tap into being authentic and being who you are, two things will happen. Number one, you'll lose some stuff and some people. Like, there is always a cost to change. Like, if you're going to change your life, if you're going to change your job, you're going to change your financial situation, there's always going to be some kind of cost to a change in your life. But a cost is not always a bad thing. When you decide to be authentic, this is what it will cost you. It will cost you some people in your life that don't like you because you're changing. It will it'll cost you some people that think you're different. It will cost you some uh, people that don't like that you're growing. People love to put their limitations on you. So please write this down. People love to put their limitations on you. And if you allow it, people's limitations will become yours. And if you fight hard enough for your limitations, you get to keep them. So many people tell me why they can't, why they shouldn't, why it's too much. Or, and, we, and we get such caught in this quicksand of, of being accepted by others. And, and trust me, I get it. I want to be liked and respected by my, my peers uh, in my industry, in my office, in my life, in my family life. But I put being respected much higher than being liked. Because what am I being liked for? Well, because being liked can come and go because depending on how the other person wants you to be is a kind of rocky road because as long as you're appeasing them, then you're liked. As long as that you're doing what they want you to do, you're being liked. As long as people are getting what they need from you, you're being liked. Well, I'd rather be respected and live for my values and live from being congruent to who I want to be. And then the second thing will happen is that you'll find the people that support you and who you are. I mean that. So when you become and start working on being authentic, the first thing will happen is you'll lose some people. Hopefully not, but you may. But sometimes the people that you lose aren't actually good for you anyway, so it's like a double win. And the second thing will happen is you'll find people that support you with your authenticity along the way. My own life, I was a subject of wanting to be approved of, accepted, and validated. And please write this down if you have a pen because it's so important that we seek validation in sometimes the worst places. 
we sometimes seek the approval of others in all the wrong places, in the wrong relationships, in the wrong environments, in the wrong friendship circles, in the wrong workplaces, in the wrong uh, situations. We find ourselves seeking it in all the places that are just terrible for us. And before you know it, you're, you're stuck in that, that rhythm of, of feeling, well, at least I matter to someone. At least, I, you know, at least someone cares about me. And that's not living. Living to appease the interest of others is not living your life. I promise you that. It is not living your life. Rather have a short life lived in a magical way, living your own truth every day than a long life trapped in the, the, the restrictions of trying to be something else for someone. You should wake up every single day and work harder on yourself than anything else in this world. Your needs, your wants, your desires. To be selfish, to be selfless. I mean it, to be selfish, to be selfless, because if you can't treat yourself well, it will always be in the, for someone else. Your reasons matter. How you treat yourself matters. How you make sure that you put yourself first matters. Does that mean, does that mean you can be an arsehole? Does that mean you can be a jerk? Does it mean that you can't help other people along the way? But how you look at yourself in the mirror? Do you like you? Are you proud of you? Are you living the way you want to be remembered? Are you uh, showing up the way you want to show up? Authenticity matters. And I'm going to ask you this question. And I want you to write it down and I'd love you to post it up. It's a big one for me. Is what does authenticity mean to you? Like, what do you think it is? And there's no right or wrong answer. So just throw out whatever you think it is to you. And I'll give you what I think it is. And one of the things that I believe has changed my life in my speaking career, uh, in my family circles, in my relationship circles, in my job as a speaker, coach, trainer, business owner, that all my, role, all my roles and all the things I do in my life, and I have a, you know, a crazy schedule, but all the things that I do in my life are all driven by me being authentic, me showing up with using my heart, uh, my, my passion. You know, I'm a big believer in this. It's, it's, it's not about how much money you make, it's how you make your money that matters. You can all make a lot of money, but for me personally, I'd rather make less money and help more people. But because I have a philosophy of abundance and creating impact in this world, then the money I get paid is plenty enough. I've got more than I ever need to be happy in myself. The work and the job is just a benefit to what I do, but authenticity matters. You can never overestimate or underestimate, sorry, the power of being on an authentic character. You know, people are switching on, man. I promise you, you're not saying that fake it till you make it or, you know, just trying to be someone you're not. Number one, it's taxing, but people can see through that shit. And it's, it's soul-destroying. And I mean, I've been there. It's so soul-destroying trying to fit in. Because we all seek these three things. To be accepted, to be understood, and to be appreciated. So please write these three things down. To be accepted, to be understood, and to be appreciated. We all fight for these same things. We want to know that people understand us. We want to know that people accept us. We, know, we want to know that people um, acknowledge us for who we are. And that's how we be seen and that's how we're heard. But again, quite often we're heard and seen by the wrong people. So what do you think authenticity is? I'll tell you what I think it is. Authenticity to me is showing up in your life, doing the things that you said you would do when no one's watching. Like doing the things that you said you would do when no one is watching. So when no one's around, not your partner, not your friends, not your family, not the people that watch you on your webinars, not the people in your workplaces. So you can't seek validation from anyone else other than yourself. That's the key. Which is when you do something that you said you were going to do, you're reinforcing that's who you are. It's like I said I'm going to be this person. I said I'm going to be this way and I do it regardless of who's around me. To me, that's authenticity because I see a lot of people say a lot of things. I see a lot of people do a lot of things. But authenticity is that are you doing that when no one else is around? Are you being that person? Are you being kind? Are you being loving? Are you being kind and loving to yourself? Are you being congruent to your own values? Or are you just trying to be someone or be something so other people like you, respect you, validate you? And it's a slippery slope and it's a trap and a lot of people do it. I've seen it. It's called smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors is what I'm talking about. People that are trying to show you something, but on the other side, it's completely different. And I'm far from perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm far from being a perfect man. But 
One thing I do without fail is showing up authentic, being authentic, which is speaking my truth to myself and to others, to live by my values, to, to, to being congruent to who I want to be, to making sure that I say the things I mean and mean the things I say. That's important. Say the things that you mean and mean the things that you say. Don't just say it because it sounds good. That's why you'll never really ever hear me uh, buy into conversations on social media that are negative around you know, certain things because it just doesn't mean enough to me. Yeah, it might be a good time to you know, be part of an argument about politics or you know, coronavirus or whatever. I, it just doesn't mean enough to me emotionally. Like my soul food, like pick what you fight for, but you only can know what you fight for if you know who you are. Please write this down. You can only know what you fight for if you know who you are. If not, you just get caught up in something else. And it's a great saying, and I love this. Stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Stand for something in your life. Stand for what you stand for, what you believe in, who you are. Or you will fall for anything, which is you'll fall for what someone else says. Or you'll buy into negative conversations in your workplace. Or you'll buy into social media trolling. Or you'll buy into negative self-talk and judgments of others. You've got to stand for something. And to stand for something, you've got to know who you are. And the hardest step to this is this right now. Being brave regardless of the outcome. I mean that. Being brave in your life regardless of the outcome. Which means that you can't hedge your bets. You can't just say, I'm only going to do this because I know the outcome is going to be good or it's going to make me feel better or the person I'm going to tell is going to appease my, my, my wants, my needs and my desires. It means that I'm going to be honest and truthful and say the things that I mean in a kind, compassionate, caring way. I'm going to behave in a way that represents the best in me regardless if people like me or not. That's the outcome. Regardless of people like you or not knowing that you're showing up being congruent. And I really want you to think about that. Being brave enough to talk to your partner about how you feel regardless of what they say back. Being brave enough to stand up for what you believe in in business regardless of what other people may be saying. And one of my, I believe, has been my best quality in business so far is going against what people have told me to do because they didn't agree with it or they didn't like it or they think it was wrong. But I went because I believed in it. I, you know, not to mean you just always go with reckless faith. But you've got to listen to your intuition. You've got to tap into your heart. You get out of your head and get into your heart. So many people are so stuck logically in problem solving. And your mind is very powerful. But I always think about your, your mind and your heart like this. Your heart employs your mind. Think about that. Your heart employs your mind to be able to articulate your life in the best way. But the problem is... People don't actually listen to their heart. What do you desire? What do you want? What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel so full of life? What is, where, where's that come from? And then use your mind to navigate your way through these challenges. So authenticity, we're going to talk more about that in a second. But where do we get it wrong? Well, we get it wrong from what we fear, our universal fears. We're not born with our fears of not being good enough. We're not born with our fears of not being... Our love. We're not born with these fears of being rejected. These are learnt fears. But please write them down anyway. They are universal. We call them universal fears because every single person uh, in their life at some point has struggled with these fears. Fear of not being good enough, fear of not being loved, and fear of being rejected. Being rejected by the ones that we love, uh, the, the community, people in our workplace. Being rejected, that, it's painful, right? It's so heartbreaking. The fear of not being good enough. Like, I'm not good enough the way I am. I've got to be better. I need to be more than I am because I, I, I see it on social media. I see it on uh, Instagram. I see it on the TV. I see it in newspapers. I'm not good enough the way I am. So this fear of I've got to be more than I am right now. And then the last one, the fear of not being loved. What if people don't love me for who I am? What if I am authentic, Jules, and I don't have people that care about me anymore? Well, as I said before, you're going to lose some people that you care about if you try and be authentic, because they're not going to like it. But that's being brave regardless of outcome. And I lost a lot of good friends. When I say they were good friends, but I lost a lot of friends when I was younger because I decided to change my life. And nothing in your life changes without you changing. You have to will yourself to be different, right? I, I willed myself to be different. And there are people that didn't like that. People that said, you're different. You're not the same person anymore. You're trying to be someone that you're not. You're not the Jews that we remember. Well, Maybe the jewels that you remember is the jewels I was trying to be to 
appease you. Maybe the person you remember is the Jules I was trying to be the keep up with the Joneses. Maybe the Jules that you remember was the boy that would walk into rooms full of people and feel completely alone. And that's the truth. That was the boy they remembered. That was the young man they remembered. Someone that was trying to be someone he wasn't to fit in. So girls liked him. So people liked him. So people made time and effort for him. Because I wanted to know I was good enough. I wanted people to love me. I wanted people to not reject me. I wanted people to know that I was worthy of their love and their time and their attention. To give me that acceptance, that approval and understanding that I'd so deeply sought in my life. But the problem is, it's a trap and it's quicksand because it never gets better. It's always more. You always need the next person, the next person, the next thing, and the next thing to make that feeling go away until you understand where it actually comes from. It's how you feel about you. It's how you show up. It's the true meaningful relationship you have in your life that matter. It's the relationship you have with yourself that's more important than anything else. And that comes from that authentic place. And I'm going to take you through that in a second. But I'm going to take you through what the real disease of people is. I know like, at the moment we talk about the pandemic of corona. And that's obviously so very challenging for the, for the whole world. But this pandemic has been going on for pretty much most people's lives. Like you've had this disease and this illness most of your life. So please write it down. It's called not enoughness. It is called the disease of not enoughness. And it's what I call it. This constant thing and feeling and thoughts and stories that we tell ourselves that continue to reinforce that we're not good enough. We are not enough. That's what we believe to be true. So we seek it. And we go to find it, as I said, in all the wrong places. And then before you know it, you're living a life that you don't enjoy, have things that you don't really need to go on living a life that you just don't enjoy. It's like, well, how did I get here? Am I even happy Am I in this relationship, in this job, in my life? Do I have a sense of meaning and purpose? Am, am I waking up, contributing and growing every day? Like, is this how I live my life? And what creates not enoughness is this. So I'm going to give you some options and I would love you to write them down. So not enoughness is the disease. Now, please write these down because these are the things that contribute to not feeling good enough. And trust me, guys, self-esteem matters. I tell you what, self-esteem is a foundation for anything that you want in your life. Self-esteem creates self-worth and self-worth creates the ability to be brave, to be authentic. Because you built it from self-esteem up, not trying to seek it, you built it. You create it because self-esteem is how you feel about you, how you see you. So this is what not enoughness looks like. Number one, people that have a deep sense of not being good enough attack. So number one is attacking. You attack other people, you attack yourself. So attacking could look like negative self-talk. You're an idiot, you're not, you're not beautiful, you're so stupid, you always stuff it up, you're a terrible mom, you're a terrible dad, you're a terrible friend. Not enoughness is constant self-bullying, attacking yourself. But also then we attack others, we become self-critical of other parents, other mums, other dads. We become critical of other people in our offices. We become critical of people on social media. We become uh, very judgmental of others. We start to pass judgment without any context about the other person and what they've gone through. We lose the ability of, to have empathy and compassion. We just see judgment. And judgment, all judgment is self-judgment. So when we become someone who starts to attack other people and ourselves, we have what we call not enoughness. Because why would you want to attack another person? Like why would you, verbally I mean, and say nasty things about them? Like why would you want to say nasty things about yourself? If you think about it, if you actually unpacked it, why would we do that? Because there's this deep sense of that we're just not worthy the way we are. So being self-critical and being self-critical of others allows us to navigate our way through that. Number two is to be trying to control. What does control look like? Well, control looks like this. You try and control the way people love you. Well, I tell you this, you can never control the way people love you. You try and control the cir circumstances and settings and the environments that you live your life in. So it's like, I, I need to feel safe, so I need to control. You know, fear creates control. The fear of not being loved, not being good enough, and, not being, and being rejected has this sense of control. So if I can control my environments, then I can control the outcomes. That's not true. You can't control how people treat you. You can't control how people love you. You can't control life. You can only control how you show up, how you deal with your challenges, how you overcome them. You can only control who you choose to become. 
who you decide to be. But we spend a lot of time trying to control other people, other things, and it's impossible. Also comes from a sense of not being good enough. Next one, we validate. We seek validation from people and ourselves. We seek validation from other people in our life, our friends, our family, our workplaces, social media, might be putting a photo up and getting a certain amount of likes or whatever it is. We start to seek validation. We want to know people uh, recognize us. That's why social media has been such an incredible tool, but also such a destructive one because people want to be validated. It's like, I'm put this photo up, please like it, or I've done this, please like it. And I'm just looking to my right, I've got all these... You know, all these awards that I've won over the last few years has been incredible. Happiness Co. has won over the last few years. And it's like, it's like oh, even awards are validation. It's like we're going to give people these awards to, to make them feel that they are achieving great things in their life. So we seek validation, but the problem is if it's coming from a place of not being good enough, it's never enough. It's never enough awards. It's never enough money. It's never enough approval. It's never enough likes on social media. We always want more, and it turns into what we call the happiness trap. So validation, if you're constantly seeking validation from other people or you're constantly trying to find and and seek approval in your life, there's also a sense of non-enoughness because why does it matter to you? The only business that should matter to you is what you think of you. And don't get me wrong, do I, again, do I like the relationship I have with my peers, my family, my friends, you all? Of course, but it's not my driving motivator. My driving motivator is do I like me? Do you like you and would you date you? I know that sounds a bit crazy, but do you like the person you are and would you date you? And what I mean by that is, do you have the qualities that you would fall in love with? Think about the question. Do you have the qualities that you would fall in love with? And if you're constantly self-critical, I don't know if that's a quality that you'd fall in love with. If you're constantly being dishonest, if you're constantly taking shortcuts, if you're constantly being lazy, if you're constantly complaining about the world. I don't know if these are qualities that you would fall in love with. Of course you wouldn't. So these things that we have to work on ourselves and start to overcome the validation of others and accept ourselves for who we are to be able to move forward to the people that we want to become. Also a really big one. And then the last one is avoidance. So do you avoid hard conversations? Do you avoid conflict? Do you avoid having difficult conversations with yourself? Like, Nothing gets better without conflict. It's like necessary chaos. Like conflict creates growth. So if you're not willing to have these hard conversations with people, then things quite often won't change. And in life, you get what you tolerate, true. Like in life, you get what you deserve. So if you allow other people to treat you poorly, it's exactly what you'll get. If you tolerate people treating you with a lack of respect, then it's exactly what you'll get. You have to deserve more. If you want more, deserve more. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you demand high standards for your own life because the best way to treat someone to so sorry the best way to treat other people in how to treat you is by treating yourself well and please understand it and please write this down if you're not putting yourself first you're teaching other people how to put you second think about it if you are not putting yourself first You are teaching other people in your life how to put you second. And who do you blame for that? You can only blame yourself. You may complain about it, like no one puts me first, no one thinks about me, no one checks in on me, no one cares about me. Well, I know this to be true because we refuse to put ourselves first. We neglect who we are and we appease and become people pleasers and we look after other people. doesn't mean you can't be amazing, caring, loving and be just an incredible human. But you have to stem it from, and the foundations have to be built around you being you and you putting yourself first and being authentic and living from that core value, which is who you are matters, what you do matters, how you live your life matters, which I'm going to actually take you through the authenticity wheel that we call it. We teach this in all our Happiness Co. programs and you know our corporates across Australia. We've taught this to thousands of people now, which is what we call the authenticity wheel. So what stops people being authentic is the fears and all the things I just explained uh, and the non-enoughness, this, this constant belief system that we're not worthy and then the fears that support that. But this is how you really see what we call authenticity. So if you have a pen, draw a circle. Like draw a circle. Like if you've all seen the movie Shrek, 
you know, onions have layers. That's like what we're thinking about here. So people have layers. And there's different layers to people that have different meanings and different things that we want to show and, and, and tell people about ourselves. But think about the outer layer of a person. So if you had an onion, there's an outer layer of that circle, right? So you want one big circle. And that, that out circle or the outer circle is called perception. So please write down perception being what people think of me. Like what people think of you is their perception. What you think of me is your perception. So the outer circle is people's perception. Your perception of me, my perception of you, people's perception of you. It's their perception. It's their reality. It's how they see you. That's the outer layer. And if you go the next layer down, so you do another circle inside that circle. So outer layer is perception. The next layer down is persona. And what is persona? Well, persona is how you want to be seen. So perception is how you're seen and persona is how you're seen. Oh, sorry. Perception is how you're seen and persona is how you want to be seen. And this is a fascinating one. And you go into corporate workplaces and, or you know, environments or sporting clubs or schools or wherever I go and do facilitation workshops and stuff like that in. And you have these people, you question them. It's like, oh, you know, Jim, he's such an arsehole, Jim. He, he's you know, so, so selfish. And I'm like, okay, well, tell me more about this. And you find a bunch of people that support this idea and this perception that Jim's selfish, he's an arsehole. And then I sit down with Jim. I say, Jim, I can see what the problem is. I, I, I have a sense of you know, understanding what the problem is for after speaking to some of the staff here. And he goes, what is it, Jules? And I said, they think you're an ar- they, people think you're an arsehole and they think you're selfish. And he'd be like generally shocked. Jim's a hypothetical character, by the way. I'm just making him up. But he'll be, he'll be generally shocked. He's like, what do you mean people think I'm an arsehole? Like, no one, please understand this. No one wakes up in the morning and says, I want to be an arsehole. I want to be a jerk. I want to be horrible. I want to hurt other people. I want to inflict harm. Maybe the 1% of the world, maybe the 1% of people wake up in the morning and say, I want to cause harm to someone else's life. So that perception and that persona don't always match up. You want to be seen as kind, caring, you know, a good boss, um, someone that looks after others, that respects others. But then people think that you're an arsehole. Or people think that you're selfish. Or people think that you're a pushover. But sometimes our perception is that we're cool or we're popular or we're, we're a go-getter or we're, you know, we're sales-driven or we're just like, you know, we step on anyone to get to where we want to go. That's also sometimes people's perceptions of us. But that doesn't also mean that you want to be seen that way either. So perception and persona matter because they don't match up. We start to what we, please write this down. If we don't match up to the way people see us, because we want to be seen, we want to we want to be validated. This is when it's coming from a place of disempowerment. By the way, we do is what we do is we conform. Conform is we become like someone else wants us to be. So, if I wanted to feel popular, I wanted to feel I wanted to be seen as popular, but no one thought I was popular. Then what do you think I would start doing? I'd start doing other things that the popular kids would probably be doing to then appease them to feel that I was popular and to be seen as popular. If I wanted to be seen as a kind person and I wasn't seen as a kind person, maybe I'd become a people pleaser and always do things for other people all the time and always put them first and put myself second because I want to be seen that way and then people may start to see me as a people pleaser. So the problem is, if we're not seen the way that we want to be seen by others, quite often we'll conform to that. We'll do things against our best interest, to be accepted, to be approved of, to be validated at the cost of ourselves, at the cost of living from our values, at the cost of putting ourselves first, which is ultimately neglect. You neglect your health, you get sick. You neglect your finances, you get broke. You neglect your um, health, you get unhealthy. If you neglect your um, you know, relationships, you break up. If you neglect yourself, your whole life starts to fall apart because... Again, who you are matters. And that's the first two. So you've got perception, you've got persona, and now you've got ego. So the next circle in, inside this you know, onion of self-worth, is your ego. And the best way to think about your ego is this. Your biggest cheerleader and your biggest bully. 
So I repeat it. Your ego is your biggest cheerleader and your biggest bully. You're like, when you do something really good, you're like, yeah, that was awesome. I'm, damn, I've got this. And you feel really confident in that moment. And you put that dress on, you're like, damn, I look sexy and beautiful. When you put that suit on, you're like, damn, I look dapper. Or you achieve something and you're like, oh, you know, wow, I was, I was damn good at that. That's like your, your positive ego, that empowering ego saying, go you, man. You're, you're epic. But on the flip side of that, your ego is also that person that says you're ugly, you're not good enough, you're selfish, you're a bad person, you stuff this up, no one's ever going to love you, you're fat, you're, you're revolting, you're, wor- you're worthless, you mean nothing, no one's ever going to find any value in you, you're never going to live your dreams, you're too old, you're too dumb, you're, too, you're, too not, you're just not good enough. That is your biggest bully. The things that you say to yourself when no one else can hear it, in your head. The things that you say when you look at yourself in the mirror. The things that you say about your life. The things that you say about the things that you do. That are so very hurtful. And we do it all the time. We complain about ourselves. We put ourselves down. We are critical of ourselves. That is your biggest bully. So we have the biggest bully that's constantly hurting us. And then we have the cheerleader that's constantly trying to reinforce that we're good enough. And, un- and sadly and unfortunately, the-, the biggest bully just overwhelms your biggest cheerleader. Because quite often we look for more bad things in the world than we do good. We quite often look for more bad things in ourselves than we do good. And that's just quite often human nature. But you can change it. It's like by default or design. Are you designed or defaulted? Like are you default negative and you can design yourself to be positive? Of course you can. Like you default to complaining and you de- default to not feeling good enough because the world just told you that or something happened to you along the way. You didn't get that job or you didn't that relationship breakdown or someone hurt you and someone lied to you and someone betrayed you. You start to believe these things. And I, I mean this. We start to believe the things that happen to us. Like we're not, we're not lovable because someone couldn't love us. Or we're not lovable because someone left us. Or we're not good enough because we didn't get that job. Or we're not uh, pretty enough because... You know, you know, I, we didn't get that. We didn't look great in that dress or that suit that we put on. Like we, we start to believe the things that happen to us, and we also start to believe the things that we do. So when we make mistakes, we believe that we are our mistakes. We believe that the people that we hurt, and we get stuck in it for years on years on years. Like when you've made a mistake in your life and you hold it against yourself, like ransom. Or you hurt this person, or you let this person down, or you lied, or you stole, or you cheated, or you were you know, just not kind. And then you use it as a, a punching bag for the rest of your life to remind yourself that you aren't good enough because of what you did once upon a time in your life. Please know this. You are always bigger than your problems, and you're more than your mistakes. You're always bigger than your problems, and you're always more than your mistakes. The pain of the past can't hurt you today unless you choose to live there that's the truth and i want you to write this word down meaning and focus meaning and focus where do you put your meaning and where do you put your focus meaning is everything meaning creates emotion if your meaning is no one likes you that's gonna be very hurtful if your meaning is that you're unlovable that's gonna hurt you if that your meaning is that you always get it wrong that's gonna hurt you your meaning is so powerful but we're so good at putting you know disempowering meanings on things and a good example of, of, of this is what I use quite often on stage. Is imagine there's a, a Friday night at a pub and I mustered up the courage to go walk over to this girl and ask to buy her a drink. I walked over there and I asked her, hey, I'm Jules, um, can I buy you a drink? I'd love to buy you a drink. And then she says, no. And then obviously in that moment I'm rejected. And in that moment we start telling ourselves stories. I want you to think about this. You start telling yourself stories. So as I'm walking back from the rejection and she says no, it's the things that you say to yourself then and the meanings that you create then that are damaging. Not that she said no. We don't fear the word no. We've been getting no since we were young. Mum, can I have an ice cream? No. Mum, can I have a lollipop? No. Mum, can I stay up later? No. Like dad, like we, we understand the word no. Yes, no. It's like the, the yin and yang of life. But where it gets tricky is in the rejection part because who creates the why? Rejection is only powerful when we create meaning because of the why. Who creates the why? I tell you who. You do. You create the why. So when someone rejects you, you create the why someone will reject you. 
So as I walk back from this girl who said no for, to me buying her a drink, I start saying this to myself. Wow, that was the third time that happened to me this month. Maybe I'm not, oh, I'm not good looking. I don't have enough confidence. Maybe I'm too skinny. Maybe my hair was too high. Or maybe um, she doesn't find me attractive. Like These are the things that you start to say to yourself. You start to tell yourself stories. But maybe she, would, maybe she said no because she's got a boyfriend. Maybe she said no because she just got out of a, a terrible relationship or a long relationship. Or maybe she has um, promised her girls that she's going out on a girls' night. Maybe um, she's a lesbian. Maybe she's not even into boys. There's a lot of reasons why she may have said no. But we don't know any of these reasons. We don't ask them to fill out a survey. Hey, can you fill in this 10-page survey to tell me why you said no to me? We just make up the story. And that's why your ego is so very dangerous. When you get rejected from that job that you wanted, when uh, you have a fight with your partner, when something doesn't go well in your workplace, when you have a you know, falling out with your friends or your family. We start to create these stories that represent our biggest bully, like it's your fault. You're not good enough. It's something you've done. Or, as I said before, you get caught up in not enoughness when you start attacking people, avoiding, um, seeking validation from others. And sometimes seeking validation can be telling your friends and family about something that someone's done to you or you've done to someone else to seek validation and approval for what you did. Like we try and justify. Think about it. We try and justify our behavior by seeking validation from other people. Like, did I do the right thing? And then someone says, yeah, you did. I would have done the same thing too. Well, here's my answer to that. Don't ever take advice from broke, sad, or unhappy people. And I, and I mean that with respect, by the way, to everyone listening. Don't take advice on how to be happy from a sad person. Don't take advice of how to create wealth or invest your funding from people who don't have any money that live paycheck to paycheck. Don't ask people how to live your dreams and live a life of passion and purpose if they are not living their life the same. Ask the right people for advice that are doing the things that you want to do. Ask the right people for wisdom and knowledge that are doing the things that you want to do. And we all get stuck in these traps at times, but don't seek validation and, and significance from people that are going to tell you the answers that you want to hear that don't challenge you. Like, no, you did the wrong thing and you should be better. That's, a, that's great feedback your friends and family and, and people that will push you should give you. Like, I actually think you could have handled that a little better, not just to appease you, to make you feel good. People pleasing never gets you where you want to go, and people people pleasing you to appease you doesn't also get you where you want to go. You know, hard conversations, easy life. And why I mean this is because you have to have tough conversations with your ego. Who do you want to be? Are you living the way you want to be remembered? Are you waking up every day on purpose? Are you going to bed at night knowing you're proud of your day today? And I'm not saying every single day of your life you're going to feel like that. But more days than less, you should be knowing that you matter, knowing that you've done some good in this world, knowing that you've contributed to someone else's life, knowing that you're good enough. As I said before, you should be waking up every day working on yourself harder than anything else because that will be the reflection and the results of everything that you get. That effort that you put into you will create the results in your life. The effort that you put into who you are will be the results of what, uh, what your life looks like. You know, your life is made up of who you are, like the, the things that you do, the things that you believe in, the thoughts that you allow yourself to think, the emotions, where you put your energy, where you put your time. These things are all about you. So what you will get in life is a reflection of who you are. Please write this down. What you get in life is a reflection of who you are. The things I have in my life right now, I didn't know I wanted when I was younger because I was just so beat up, so emotionally broken, so lost, so sad, so full of shame and guilt and unworthiness and that not enoughness consumed me. I was so self-critical of others and myself. I was so um, big on seeking validation from other people. I was so big on attacking and controlling that I lost my way so very young and I lost my way in my choices I made and the things that I did and the people I hurt. But I, I say this to you because the things I wanted when I was that person are so different to the things I want now because you don't truly know what makes you happy unless you know who you are. You don't truly know how to be authentic if you don't know what you fight for. And we just get caught up with going with the grain. And you have to challenge yourself to have a hard conversation with yourself like I did once upon a time and said, mate, 
you don't like you. You actually hate you. You despise the person that you look at in the morning, in the mirror. Are you going to continue to live your life like this? You continue to blame other people. You continue to justify your poor behavior. Are you going to continually turn to drugs and alcohol and distraction and avoidance and be uh, this party guy and just go out and never take life too seriously? But you're going to walk into rooms full of people and feel completely alone. You're going to always wonder if you're good enough. You're going to wonder when you kiss that person at night and you roll over, do you still matter to her? Because these are the things I would tell myself that I didn't matter. I wasn't worried. I wasn't enough. And they would come out in all aspects of my life because the life that you have and the things that you get are a representation of who you are. And what I mean by that is how you feel, what you think about, your authentic behavior, your nature, your beliefs, your outlooks. All these things go into it. So let me go to the last bit. So we've got perception, persona, ego, and then we've got your core. Your core is where your authenticity lays, which is that person you really are. Take off the ego. Take off the winning. Take off the losing. Take out the bully. Take out the cheerleader. Take out what people think of you. Take out what you think of you. And just like, am I the person I want to be? Like, am I genuinely, genuinely happy with myself? And am I willing to be brave enough to be that person every single day? That's, that's authenticity. That's living from your values. Your values are deep. They are deep to you. You can't get other people to inflict your, their values on you. You can't, get, uh, you can't just borrow someone else's values. You can only have your own. And when we have conflicts in, our, conflicts in our life, quite often we have values conflicts. If you value love and someone else doesn't. If you value time and someone else doesn't. We value certain things and we're all very different. But your authenticness is, can I show up every day and live from these values regardless of outcome? If your value is to be kind and you show up every day and then you see other people being unkind and sometimes you buy into these conversations, are you truly living from that value? If you value love, are you truly living from love or are you loving with conditions? Like, I only love you if you love me these certain ways. And these things are really good to start to think about because you start to think, wow, am I really living from my values? Am I really living from the person I want to be? And the great way to think about that is this. Am I living the way I want to be remembered? Which is, am I living from the values that would allow people to remember me from them? So think about what I just said. Live the way you want to be remembered. So am I living from my values so people will remember me for that? Like that way. Like I'm kind, I'm loving, I'm giving, I'm full of contribution, I'm honest, I have integrity. That's a great way to think about it because if you're not changing, every second of every day is a chance to turn your life around. Like, you don't like where you are? Well, change. You're not a tree. I love that saying. If you don't like where you are, move. You're not a tree. Get out your own way. And it's choices towards the person that you want to be. I know it can sometimes be difficult because you can feel like you're so very stuck. And it's like the harder you try, the quicker you seem to sink. Well, life is never easy. But your problems will never go away either. You just get better at dealing with them. So the more that you work on yourself, the more you work on being more resourceful, the more you work on things like positive self-talk and gratitude and, and providing these routines and rituals that support the best in you every single day. Build the framework. Like Think about a framework or the foundations. Build strong foundations to support the best in you. And you don't have to be great and you don't have to be perfect to get started because you're never going to be the best you want to be and you're never going to be perfect, I guarantee you that. But you do have to get started to move. Like you do have to get started for change to happen. To, if you want your life to get better, you have to get better. True. If you, um, you know, wish it was easier, don't. Wish, it was, wish that you were better. I mean that. Don't wish your life was easier. I just wish you know, coronavirus was a little easier on me. I wish that I didn't have these you know, health challenges. I wish that I had more money. I wish that I had a relationship. Don't wish for things. Become better. So if you want a relationship, work on the qualities that someone would love in you because you worked on them so hard in yourself. If you want more money, well, then work on saving more. Like, don't ever wish your life was easier. Wish that you were better because that calls you into action. It's like, you know what? I'm doing this. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and get out my own way. I'm going to change my life because I chose to. 
I have this will to overcome. Like I will become whatever I will to be. And please write this down. I will become whatever I will to be. Because that's on you. You will become what you decide you want to be. Not from what other people tell you to. That's the power. You, you may be in the trap right now of living your life through how other people want you to be. But that's, that doesn't have to be that way. You can actually say, you know what, I'm going to change these things. I'm going to change the... I'm going to audit my life. I'm going to look at the things that are causing me discomfort and pain and sadness and sorrow. And I'm going to work on the cost and the reward. I'm going to look at the things I may lose. And there's three things that happen in this life when you start to change. Loss, less or never. We start to think about the things that we lose. We start to think about the things that we're going to have less of. And we start to think about the things that we may never have ever again. But losing something, having less of something, and never having something ever again doesn't mean it's bad either. People always say to me about the, the corona thing right now. Yeah, how are you going with it? All? I was like, well, it's different. But different doesn't mean bad. Don't get for, uh, in this trap of certainty and it has to always be this way. Be okay. Be like what Bruce Lee said. Be the water. Be the water. Be flexible in your thoughts. And be flexible in your emotions. But stand for something. Stand for something. Do what you said you would do when no one's watching. Look at yourself in the mirror every day and have honest conversations with yourself. Look at yourself every day and call yourself out on your own BS. And I'm, I'm big on that. Call yourself out on your own BS, like a BS meter. Lots of people talk BS to themselves. You are responsible for these things. So call yourselves out on it. And before I finish up, as I said before, if you want to live an authentic life, you've got to be brave, you've got to be bold, and you've got to be often. You've got to be brave enough to take the first step. You've got to be bold enough to stand in your truth. And you've got to be often enough to do it over and over and over again. Because it's not just enough to rock up one day authentic. It is every single day. Wax on, wax off. Being authentic takes work like anything else in your life. You want to be fit, you've got to go to the gym. But being authentic means that you're making sure that you're conscious of the things that you say. You're conscious of the things that you do. And the best way to do that is to be brave, to be bold, and to be often. Remember, look through your not enoughness. Where do you find yourself spending time? Which one? All of them maybe, or maybe one or two of them. You can have one or you can have all of them. Where do you find yourself being in that sense of not being good enough? And where do you see yourself falling into these fears and that sense of rejection? But also look at that authenticity wheel. What do you think people think of you? How do you want to be seen? And make sure that how you want to be seen is how you are to you. So if you want to be seen as kind, well, be kind to yourself. If you want to be seen as loving, well, be so ridiculously loving on yourself. These are the things that matter. Use your personas, how you want to be seen, as the way that you are to yourself. And your life will change in incredible ways. Until I see you next time, thank you so much for supporting Happiness Aid. Thank you for being on this incredible journey with us all. We love it. We love serving you uh, and giving you powerful distinctions uh, along your life uh, to help you be better people. And I know that this is so very important to people right now is that we can all agree on this. We can always be better tomorrow than we were today. We can always be a better mom, a better dad, a better husband, a better wife, a better person, a better work colleague, a better leader. And that's the beauty of life. We can always work on being better tomorrow than we were today. And there are choices that we make towards the people that we want to be or choices away. So wherever you are right now, stop saying to yourself, I wish I had a better life or I wish I was more authentic or I wish I was more honest or I wish I was more passionate. Just get up and start building that life. The best time to plant a tree is 40 years ago. You know, second, temp second best time to plant a tree is right now. I repeat it. The best time to plant a tree is 40 years ago because it's already been blossoming in, you know, it would be incredible. But the second best time to plant a tree is right now, in this current moment. Remember this, change is hard to start, messy in the middle and beautiful at the end. Hard to start, messy in the middle and beautiful at the end. Good night, look after each other and big love until I see you next time.